Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Another time of Coffee and Kelly. Um, we have a wonderful new um, new moon this week, and um, the new moon is in Capricorn. And what a wonderful time to have a new moon. Uh, it's the first new moon of the new year in the first month, and the new moon is on the 9th. So it's um, the new month on the 9th in the ninth year. 2016 is a year um, that adds up in numerology as a number, a number 9, which is a fruition year, or a year of um, which goes perfectly with the new moon because um, the new moon is in Capricorn, and Capricorn is that goat who finally made it to the top of the mountain. So right now, that nine year, we're right there. We're right at the culmination of the top of the mountain. And uh, what a better way to set intentions. And that's what you do on a, on a new moon. You set your intentions for the year. And, and this is going to be a very powerful new moon because we'll be setting the intentions basically for the entire year of 2016. So since this is a year of fruition, we really want to release everything that we have learned over the last nine years because from numerology you go from you know um, one to nine and the ninth year being the end so we've we've like drudged through a decade and we've learned a lot of things and we've um, went through a lot of things and this is where you take the things that you need just like the dreamer in the beginning of the tarot uh, where he takes only the things he needs and puts them in a little sack over his shoulder and jumps through the vortex of the new year and that's what we're going to do and you don't take a heavy load with you. You leave all that stuff behind. So what you do is you write down your intentions of everything that you wish for, all your wishes, everything you wish to bring with you, to take with you. You write that down and you take that piece of paper and you can burn it so it will go up as your intentions are going up to the to the new moon. And um, you can make yourself some uh, water. You could uh, take a bottle and fill it up with water and leave it open, you know, over the new moon and receive that new moon water and you could you know make your tea with it or your coffee with it or drink a little shot glass of it every day it's not that it's any kind of um it's the intention that you put and what every time you drink a little bit of that water you are remembering what your intentions are so it's kind of like you being um in tune with who you want to be and where you want to be for the rest of the year. So that's what it basically is. It's every time you remember that, you remember, oh, well, these were my intentions that I in place at the beginning of the year, and this is what I intend to do and see it through. So basically that's what a, a blessing water would do. I mean, you don't even necessarily have to drink it. You can wash your hands in it. You can, you know, put it on your forehead. You can dab it behind your ears, or you could just let it sit there on your kitchen counter and you can look at it and every time you look at it you're going to remember those intentions and those wishes that you wrote down and those resolutions that you wish to take it with you through the whole year so um like i said the new moon is in capricorn on the 9th and we also have a really really cool day this week we have um january 11th so it's 111 which is a triple master number in angel numbers and um uh, a triple one, a one is a magician, three times would be like a master, master's magician, or an angel number. So it would be to keep your thoughts always positive. So that's going to be a cool thing. So we're going to keep our thoughts positive in the year of nine for our fruition. So everything that we do is going to come to abundance. So that's what we're doing. We also have um, Venus and Saturn. And, you know, Venus is the planet of love, and she's warm. And then we have Saturn, which is like the cold planet it holds back and this is like the planet that teaches you lessons so we're going to have love lessons going on in there um but it's also it's also like pay it's hard work it's paying off it's self-esteem so we don't have to worry about that but we also have mars and scorpio now mars and scorpio you know scorpio is that deep emotionally water sign that's just like the deepest of all of them and it's also the one that can hold is you know the many grudges and when it holds those grudges sometimes it seeks revenge so and mars is the fiery planet of action and mars just isn't going to be dealing with any kind of revenge or anything like that so when you have mars and scorpio it could go either way you can have like a really hot steamy passionate moment or it could be like that snake in the grass um that's coming to attack you from the water 
and you know being that Mars warrior of action, it sees that snake in the grass coming up and it'll like grab it by its neck and throw it away. So you got to watch it with that, with Mars and Scorpio um, this week. And we're still in Mercury retrograde and we'll be in Metro Mercury retrograde until the 26th of January. So, you know, try to hold off on signing any contracts and stuff. This is a time for you to just like reevaluate things and relax and reorganize yourself and, um, re determine things that you need to do. Um, you know, if you could put off signing anything that's important or any kind of business ventures, you know, this is basically like the time where, where you have like your, your peaks and valleys, your peaks and valleys where you're, you know, up here being the master down here studying. Okay, so this is the valley time. This is when you're down here and you need to do your study. So for the new year, I thought I would um, do the runes. I love the runes. You know, I'm working on them and I'm learning them and I'm, and I'm feeling them and um, runes are fun. And this is something that we're going to set. I'm going to see what our intentions would be set for, um, for the year, for the beginning of the year. So, but I'm only going to pick out three runes because I kind of want, um, to give you like something that's going to happen like during the beginning of 2016, towards the middle, and then towards the end, because this is a year of fruition. So this is going to kind of see like how our fruition is, um, going. So I'm going to pick three three rooms, got three, and now the first rune I picked, whoa, whoa, I have never picked this rune. This rune is the Odin rune. This is the rune of, of God. This is the divine source. This is wisdom. He's um, a blank slate. So this is like everything that has to do with human transactions. This is when people see this, they're like, oh, that's the God room. Um, they call it Odin. Odin was, you know, the God back then or one of God's names. Um, but it also goes to tell us that when we go in to the new moon, this is like for the beginning of the year. When we go into the new moon, we have to go in with a clean slate. Okay, so yes, our body needs to heal and our body tells us what it needs when we need to heal. So what does our body tell us? You know, if you are low on potassium, you know, you'll crave for a banana. Your body naturally tells you what you need, you know, and sometimes when you crave love, you create um, yourself in different relationships, and sometimes it doesn't work out, and you have to be able to release that kind of stuff. You have to release any kind of any kind of um, animosity you have. You have to be able to forgive yourself because you're already forgiven. You know, this is the God room, and that means that you have a clean slate because he sees us as his little children. And, you know, it's like, yeah, we could be a crazy two-year-old that'll keep sticking our finger in the socket and keep getting zapped until we learn it, you know, and we could go through troubled relationships and we're like, well, why was I with that person? You have to think these are lessons that we're learning. And sometimes you were with the person because you've seen something in them that needed to be fixed in yourself. So in all actuality, you were trying to fix yourself. And when that, um, when that comes to an end, that's a lesson that you learn and you can move on. And sometimes, yes, you've got to learn a lesson a couple of times. Because sometimes some people have more healing than other people do. So we can't judge other people because nobody has a perfect life. And um, some people didn't have such a hard harshness that they had to deal with or so many things they had to you know, deal with. So every, per every person's healing is different. And, um, you know, so people will take outlets and all kinds of things. You know, like people who smoke, they say because they have anxiety or... You know, um, and, and your body will help you release. And the first, you know, the best thing for healing is love. And you have to learn to love yourself. And when you learn how to love yourself, everything else falls into place because you're not going to tolerate things that are not good for your body. You're not going to tolerate relationships that are not for your greater good. You're not going to tolerate hanging around people that pull you down negatively. You're not going to tolerate um, living uh, in an unhealthy way when you eat. You're not going to tolerate those things anymore because when you love yourself, you're, you're, you're going to take care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself, you're going to take care of everybody else. And it's wonderful because your children are going to benefit for you. Your um, friends are going to benefit. 
you, you know, your plants are going to benefit. Everything benefits because when everything's working in divine order, it's it's wonderful. So we have the Odin moon for the beginning of the year. And um, Odin also wants you to know that when you go into the new year, yes, you have to release all of those past grievances. You cannot go into a new year, a year of fruition, and still be carrying a cross from 20 years ago that you had some kind of animosity with a family member or you just feel like you don't deserve love. You can't do that. Do not make me put on my witch finger and come over there and help you release your anxieties and release all of your crosses because you cannot take that into the new year. And yes, that's, that's the hidden goddess coming out in me. So don't make me come over there and make you erase all those intentions because I will hypnotize you and poof, they'll be gone. So that's what it is because karma is not the same because you're not the same. So the karma that you have today is not the same kind of karma that you had yesterday or 10 years ago or 20 years ago because you learned, you've grown, you're not the same person you were 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever years ago. You're not the same person you were when you were born. You are not the same person that's going to be who you are in 10 years from now. So karma, um, it evolves as we evolve. So no, you're not going to have to sit there and stab yourself all the time for something that happened that you had no control over. Or you see, you can't sit there and carry a cross for an ex-husband or because, you know, my mommy didn't love me enough kind of stuff. No, you can't do that because you got to love yourself. And you know what? you got to release those angers with your mom because if it wasn't for your mom, you wouldn't be here, honey. So don't make me put on the witch finger and come over there and give you a medicine woman slap because that's, that's what it is. Our karma evolves as we do. So, yes, our debt pays off as we evolve to better people. And it already shows the God room is a blank slate. So you have erased everything. But the cool thing about the God room is that on the other side, the future is also not predestined. This is where you write. Write down your intentions. You make what you want. This is the beginning of the year. This is the year of fruition. So this is the time where you're saying, you know what? I got rid of everything on, on this side because God said, throw it out. You don't need it. You know, the garbage man comes once a week. You could do it every week. Throw it out. Recycle whatever you want to do. And then here's your intentions. These are your intentions. This is where your fruition comes in. This is where your dreams are written. This is... This is wonderful. This, you know, when people get this, they, they say that this is like the, the death rune. You know, I can read you a part of the book when it talks about Odin. And um, he's the unknowable because you don't know. It's not actually predestined or written. And it's the divine, the all father. But it's also the blank is the end, but the blank is also the beginning. And this is a total trust that you have to have with your true destiny. This is like the phoenix that rise from the ashes to be born again. You have everything that you could ever need right there within you. And um, you don't have to sit there and beat yourself up because this is also a test. This is a test because it's seeing how your karma is evolutioning and, and and it's a test saying it's a test of faith it's that zero that dreamer that's the fool that's taking that leap of action that's taking that leap of faith so the beginning of the year says get rid of everything you don't need take that leap of faith bring only with you what is it of your greatest good and your best intentions because now you are predestined to write your own destiny there so our second rune that we get for the middle of the year is um uras you see, Uras is the wild ox, but the wild ox were, they were um, Enix, and Enix were a very hard oxen to domesticate, but when you did domesticate them, they were very, very good workers. You know, they could carry very heavy loads. Um, this is the rune of strength. 
So it you have, and it's man and woman. This is man and woman in one room. You see how one is taller, one is shorter. That's the man and the woman, and they are connected, you know, by their divine power. And um, and it's showing that you have the strength. You have the strength and whatever your intentions were here with your blank slate that you're trying to get your fruition going, you've got it. The strength to do it. You have the strength of the ox. And um, this is also a, a, that says that sometimes you have to go into total darkness to really appreciate the light. You, this is like the, you have to let yourself die. You know, this is like the, the process of living where you have to um, fertilize and then you have the um, the growing part and then you have the harvest and then you have the decay and then you have um, the death of the plant and then it comes back again as a seed. So sometimes, yes, you have to die, not in the sense that you are going to die it's in the sense that you have you are starting out on a clean sleep and you let everything go and you're starting fresh so this is an ending and a beginning and it's the strength um, right there let me see if it's got any other things that I could read to you about because like I said I am learning and and it's wonderful to learn things so it is the termination of new and um, the new um, terminations and new beginnings. Um, it says that's, that this form must die so the new form can be released. So it's also a cycle, it's a rune of initiation. So that means that you're on your path and you're doing what you need to do. So keep going because it's going to be really good. It's positive growth and change, but sometimes you have to descend into the darkness of, um, of the cycle because. As in nature, the progression has the five aspects, and this is what I was telling you about. There's death, decay, then there's fertilization, gestation, and rebirth. So we're in the end year, the nine year in fruition. Next year, 2017, will be a one year. So everything that we have culminated up here on our Capricorn new moon on top of the mountain, we are putting all of that foundation in place because when the new year comes in 2017, we will just be like, bam, we've got it, and and it's there. And it's it also says to tell you to prepare for opportunity that's disguised as loss. So sometimes, you know, um, it involves there's a loss of someone or something that you have an intense emotional bond with, but sometimes that not might not be what um, is part of your greater good. So. You were living that part of your life so you could retrieve your power back that you needed at that time through that person or that thing. And now it's time for you to release that. That's what I was talking about, like certain relationships or, or things that don't serve our body and our moral. And our body knows what it needs to heal. And when it comes time to a relationship, don't look at that like, oh, that person, you know, just what was I thinking about? You know, you were thinking about going in and retrieving that part of you that needed to be fixed, and now it's fixed, and now you're healed, and now you can move on. It's done. Um, so that's how, that's how you look at that. And it, whereas puts you on notice that your soul and the universe support your new growth. So that's your strength. Manhood, womanhood, the wild ox. So that's the middle of the year. And for the end of the year, we have... Legus. Legus, can you see that? He looks kind of like the number seven. And that's kind of another fate rune. And Legus is the rune of flow. Flow like water, water flows. It's um, the water, the sea. It has to do, you know, emotions. The, um, the water and sea also has to do with fertility, but it's the source of fertility. It's where life began. Um, and it's also uh, a rune of the moon because the moon is, you know, a water sign and it's it's like a Pisces kind of feeling to it. And it's also talking about because when you dive down deep um, into the sea or the water, you see you have un there's unforeseen powers that are there. That's where the psychic abilities are. These are the things that you don't see on the outside that we possess on the inside. 
you know, we're 70% water. So that means that, yes, everybody has a psychic ability. It's called intuition. We all have it. And it just, it, it has us to do with tapping into this. This is also, um, the alchemists call this conjuntio. Conjuntio means the sacred marriage. The sacred marriage of being able to combine two distinct um, metals or two distinct um, aspects of things and they blend in. So that's kind of like twin flame or soul or soulmates because it's um, bringing like the yin and the yang together. You know, or it's turning lead into gold, two different metals. Or it will turn, um, you know, rain will turn into rivers, and then the sun will evaporate in it. So it's like the three aspects of water, where you have frozen, solid, and vapor. So that's the sacred marriage. So that also could be that at during the end of the year, some of you people might be if you're not already with your soulmates, you know, and soulmates doesn't necessarily need that you, that you meet, that you need a partner in life. It could mean that you have finally learned to love yourself and you have, you have that sacred marriage with your soul and your divine. And that's wonderful. You know, um, you can also um, throw yourself into whatever your business is or, whatever your art is or your dancing or whatever it is in your love for life because the sacred marriage means that um, it's that what which conducts so it tells you to immerse yourself in the experience of living without having to evaluate or understand it just go with the flow let it happen you know it's going to get there this is the year of fruition so we're there it's also a rune this rune, um, Langus, is also the rune for cleansing, like cleansing of the soul. So that goes along with the new moon cleansing. You you, you have to, um, it says here, this rune awful, awesome, often signals a time for cleansing, um, for reevaluating, reorganizing, and realigning. And there you go. That's the perfect time because we're in, we're in um, Mercury retrograde, and at the end of the year we'll be in Mercury retrograde again. So it's a time for you to study spiritual manners um, and re ready yourself for self-transformation. So this could also mean the sacred marriage of you going from a caterpillar into a butterfly. So what a beautiful way to have a fruition year and to end it. Um, it says that a rune of self relating rightly to the self. So this is Langus. And it also says that this is the uh, rune that talks about in fairy tales that where the hero and the heroine or the prince and the princess or the king and the queen live happily ever after. So this is your happy ending to your fairy tales, my darling. So, you know, that kind of provokes me to, I was just going to do runes, but that kind of provokes me to want to pull um, a fairy card you know, our beautiful fairy cards. So I'm going to pull one and see what I get for January 2016. Oh, and it flew right out. How funny is that? It flew out and flew on the floor. The High Priestess. It's a two. The High Priestess's duality. That means that um, whatever provoked me here with Lankus and sacred matrimony or sacred marriage or conjuntio, it's telling you here. And this also, this rune also tells you to go in and study and wisdom and uh, ready yourself for self-transformation. But two is a number of duality. So it means you might not be doing it alone. You might be doing it with your soulmate. How awesome is that? I think that's beautiful. The high priestess, she is, uh, I would say, the equivalent to the magician's wife. But usually a high priestess, she's pretty much on her own because sometimes she is the one who trains the magician because the magician can do tricks. And he can do magic, 
but the high priestess is the one who has the wisdom. She's the one who learned everything and taught the tricks to the little magician. So the magician can't pull anything over on the high priestess because the high priestess is a well-studied woman and a well-organized um, mental capacity. And, and she also is telling you to trust your intuition because you, most of your wisdom and your decisions can come from right inside of you. So trust your intuition and be careful. Um, do a careful reflection before you take any action. So that's really good right now with Mercury retrograde before you sign anything, before you do any, you know, crazy and buying a house stuff. Think about it for a minute. It's over on January 26. But this is also has to do with the uh, soulmates because it's duality. So you might be not doing it alone. It's just with the high priestess, the goddesses will always be the queen and you know that's just the way it is and it says that your insights come through meditation so when you're going in and reevaluating in that deep watery sign of langos um you are going to see those unforeseen powers you're going to have that fertile source you're going to get those ideas those ideas that are placed in your mind you're going to go with the flow with the waves because that's the way your body moves you know and that's the reason why um women are so good at overcoming things and we don't seek revenge so much and we don't because we are one with the water that is within us and we are one with the moon that guides us every month you know, through our cycle. So we understand every month how we go from fertility to decay to um, rebirth. We understand that. And that's the reason why the High Priestess is here, because she's here for us to help other people understand. We've got to help the men understand. The men are great at doing little tricks, but the women are the ones who possess the wisdom of um teaching because we lived it it is in us it is part of our cycle it's who we are and the high priestess soulmates with langus now be careful like i told you about mars and scorpio because you never know when that snake in the grass is going to come in out so also you got to keep your your um your antennas up because when you see that snake coming you need to grab it before it bites you because that's that crazy um, vibe that's going on with that. But other than that, it seems that, oh, look, when I picked this up, there was two cards, and the, and the other one was the King of Autumn. So that kind of goes together. You know, maybe you might not have a magician. Maybe you have a King of Autumn, and the King of Autumn was really cool, really, really cool, because this is a, a an abundance card. A King of Autumn, Autumn is... Um, an earth sign so it's the king of pentacles and you know the king of pentacles has the Midas touch so everything he touches turns to gold so that's good and that's why he sits like a boss on the throne because yeah you know sometimes men have the power and the king of autumn does and he came up with her so maybe you don't have the magician but maybe you got the king of autumn and it you know it says be assertive when you come to know when you know uh, what you're doing is right and uh, everything will go your way and it's also a good person or a good company to work for because the king of autumn he's accomplished and he's compassionate and he's gifted and he's charismatic because he's autumn he's already lived through three seasons so he knows what it's like because he's living right in the sign of um of harvest in the in the autumn is when we harvest everything so he is reaping all of his good um all of his um good things that he has sown and you see he's sitting there with his dog and um the dogs are a sign of loyalty so um he's he's a loyal person who could touch any you know, another Midas touch and he can turn things into gold and, and he's gifted and he's compassionate and he's also accomplished so he's he's a good a good one for the, the high priestess and it's a two duality so that's really neat 
Okay, everybody, I'm giving you tons and tons of blessings, angel blessings, hugs for the new year. Release your intentions with the new moon and stay focused on what your fruition is going to be for 2016. And um, hold off on doing any kind of crazy stuff right now um, during Mercury Retrograde. And come back and see me next week or check me out on HiddenGoddess.org or um, on Hidden Goddess on Facebook uh, or on my YouTube channel, which is um, where you're looking at me right now. And I'm sending you tons of blessings, angel kisses, angel hugs, and don't forget, my darlings, to always hold the light. Bye. Happy January.